guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been wondering about Disney's new Lightning Lane systems and the Lightning Passes and are confused, don't worry, I've got you. We're going to talk about it today. A while back, Disney had Fast Passes and everybody misses those. <laughs> then they had Genie Plus and now this past summer, they implemented the new Lightning Lane Pass. So the point of all three was the same. It was to allow you to skip the regular, usually longer, standby line and to use a separate shorter line with a return time. So there's three passes. There's the Lightning Lane Single Pass, the Lightning Lane Multi-Pass, and the Lightning Lane Premier Pass. So we're going to talk about each of those today, starting with the Lightning Lane Single Pass. You can purchase up to two per person per day. The Lightning Lane Single Pass, one pass, allows you to use a Lightning Lane line for one ride. Eligible attractions with the Lightning Lane Single Pass are not eligible with the Lightning Lane Multi-Pass and vice versa. They're co two completely separate categories of rides. Now, the cost usually varies based on date and the attraction because the busier days, it's going to be more expensive. The slower days, it'll be less expensive. But on average, it costs between $10 and $25 per person per ride for the Lightning Lane Single Pass. Your Single Pass ride options are in the Magic Kingdom, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Tron in Epcot, Guardians of the Galaxy, in Hollywood Studios, Rise of the Resistance, and in Animal Kingdom, Flight of Passage. Moving on to the Lightning Lane Multipass. Again, you're saving time in line by using a shorter line, but instead of just having one ride for, per pass, you get three. So the Multipass is up to three rides per day, per person. You can pick the attraction and the return time. And the attractions are broken up into categories one and two. So you pick one ride from category one and two rides from category two. You can also receive digital downloads of the attraction photos and videos. A frequently asked comment is, can you make modifications to your selections like throughout the day if, as your day is not unfolding how you thought it would? Yes, you can make modifications, but again, non-refundable. Now, the cost for this one, again, it varies by date and park, but it is approximately $25 to $35 per person per pass per day. Moving on to the most controversial, the Lightning Lane Premier Pass, this is only for guests staying at a Disney Deluxe Resort or a Disney DVC, which is Disney Vacation Club Villas Resort, and that's also considered a deluxe. So the Dizel Deluxe Resort guests. It allows one-time entry into every Lightning Lane experience in, a, in one particular theme park per day with no return windows. You can just go in the Lightning Lane whenever you want in one theme park per day. You, again, also receive digital photos and videos from the attractions. And just like the other passes, the cost is going to vary based on date and park. But the early info shows that the cost you guys are going to be blown away, is between $129 and $329 per person per day. But you get a lot more with it. You're skipping the lines at all of the most popular rides in a park. Now, to sum up all of the Lightning Lane passes, they're all non-refundable. They can be booked, if you're staying at a Disney hotel, they can be booked up to seven days prior to the start of your hotel stay at 7 a.m. Eastern time. I'm in the Midwest, so for me, it would be 6 a.m. The cost varies based on the date, the ride, the park, a whole bunch of factors, and you can receive digital downloads. So those are the three passes. Once you get into it, it is kind of common sense once you hear about it. Single pass is for a single ride at a time, multi-pass is up to three, and the premier pass is for every lightning lane ride in a park at a time. So let me know, I'm curious, do you guys think you will be purchasing this? The Premier Pass, honestly, it seems the most worth it to me if I'm staying at a deluxe resort for like one day, you know, or, or, or in particular, if you're staying a much shorter, if it's a much shorter trip and you're like, I need to make sure I get through everything. I can see doing that as well. Other than that, I think I personally would pick the single pass to like, make, for example, make sure we get to ride Tron. We always get park hoppers. So we return to the parks multiple times, but if it's, hey, it's our last day at the Magic Kingdom, we still haven't ridden Tron, I could see then paying to ride that ride once. Um, 
but it is pricey. It is pricey. So let me know in the comments if you guys think, um, I mean, everybody's going to say it's expensive, right? Nobody's going to say this cost is totally reasonable, but I'm curious if you think it's worth it and if you're going to purchase any of these and if so, which one? So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.